Hello. Uh, I'd like to introduce the team I have with me. Um, the Honorable Mayor Wanda Williams, Captain Terry Whelan, Captain Martin, Atal Martin, my Deputy Chief Dennis Sorensen, and Captain Milo Hooper, and of course, um, Commissioner Thomas Carter. I thank you all for coming here today. Uh, we've been getting like many questions concerning the homicide last night, and I want to um, let Terry Whelan, Captain Whelan from our criminal section, give you some information about the homicide, and, and, and then I'll come back up and I can um, talk then. Captain. Mm -hmm. Madam Mayor, Commissioner, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Captain Terry Whelan. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, some incidents that happened over this past weekend uh, here in our city. Uh, taking it back to Saturday the 26th at about 1835 hours, Harrisburg Police Patrol units responded to the area north 5th of Peffer Streets in reference to some shots being fired in that area. Uh, upon arrival, an adult male gunshot victim was encountered. He was transported to local hospital where he was treated uh, and listed in stable condition. Unfortunately, he was uncooperative throughout the, the subsequent investigation. Um, but we're doing the best we can from our end but obviously we need some cooperation from, from uh, our victim in, in that case. Moving it up to yesterday, last evening, uh, March 27th at about 21, 26 hours, Harrisburg Police Patrol units were dispatched to the Amtrak train station, a couple blocks uh, east of where we're, we're standing right now, in reference to shots being fired at that location. Upon arrival, they encountered an adult male gunshot victim. Uh, he was sitting in a taxi cab. He was a taxi cab driver. Uh, that individual was subsequently transported to a local hospital where unfortunately he succumbed to his injuries. The victim was identified as Kenneth Cobb. I'll spell that Kenneth K-E-N-N-E-T-H Cobb, C-O-B-B, -B, date of birth 5-6-1962. This appears to have been a targeted incident and uh, I can assure you it's a very active and ongoing investigation at this time. We have uh, detectives out in the field as, as we speak. Um, working, working some leads. Anyone with, with information is asked to contact Dolphin County Dispatch at 717-558-6900 and ask for the city police, or they can contact Detective Ian Dawson. He's our lead detective in this case. His phone is area code 717-255-3187. He can also be emailed at idawson, I'll spell that, I-D-A-W-S-O-N at harrisburgpa.gov. You can also submit anonymous tips through our Crime Watch portal. That's all I have at this time. Excuse me. Thank you. Thank you, Captain. The uh, past couple of months have been uh, very active for Harrisburg City. There's been numerous shootings. There's been numerous calls of, of shots fired. Harrisburg police are actively investigating all of the cases. Um, it's unfortunate, but this is the eighth homicide that we have so far in the city. And I've been thinking back, I don't remember um, it being this active this early, you know, but as everybody here knows, you know, uh, crime spikes and then crime drops down. But we are doing everything that we can possibly do. We have people on overtime working, working these cases. We have made some very good leads in these cases, and uh, we're going to bring resolution to some of these cases very, very soon. Um, the mayor is very um, adamant about the crime in this city. Um, she's very concerned, but she is not soft on crime. We are doing everything that we can possibly do. Um, we're getting a whole lot of phone calls, and uh, I want to thank the public because the public, um, they have partnered with us somewhat, and they're doing everything that they can to support us. But these are shots fired, and these are people running around with uh, guns that they should not have. Uh, with that being said, um, uh, we can take questions. Uh, like our commissioner said, we, we can't really get a whole lot into details at this point. Uh, I'd be willing to just let it at that. From what we know about the investigation, it, it appears to be a targeted incident. When you say targeted, you guys used this a couple of times recently. I just want to be clear for our view. When you say targeted, you mean this was not a random It doesn't appear that way. I can't say that for certain, but just, I'm a reasonable, intelligent guy, and it just doesn't seem like that. From targeted, does that mean that the motive was likely money or something else? 
I have no idea what the motive was at this time. Did you believe to be a robbery? Um, I, I can't get into that at this time. I'm sorry. I, I wish I could give you a little bit more, but I don't want to compromise the integrity of the investigation that we have so far. Yes, sir. There are a couple of things going on that we're doing with um, other agencies, surrounding agencies, uh, with the uh, state, the federal, the local governments. Uh, I'm talking to some outside police agencies, having um, other undercover people come in. Um, you know, uh, you can look at the, um, the COVID, the pandemic. You can look at uh, the mental health aspect of everything. You can look at people not working, some people not trying. You can look at, you know, numerous things, you know, that could quite possibly be the reason for this year uptick in our violence. But um, whatever, you know, that the reason is, it doesn't cut mustard with us. It is not called for. It's uncalled for. It is senseless. You're taking somebody else's life, and we are not going to tolerate that. We are actively looking for the people. Uh, we have some very good leads, some very good tips. And, you know, um, I wish that we can bring um, resolution quicker to some of these shootings, but, you know, they take time. And that's what the media and the public must understand. You know, sometimes it takes time to solve these cases because we only get one shot at it. You know, excuse that frame, but, you know, we only get one chance to make everything right because if we jump the gun and if we charge somebody and then we go to court and if we lose it, we can't take it back. So we're taking our time, we're crossing all T's, um, dotting all I's, and they will get had. What would you say to the residents that are fearful for their safety and also their kids' safety? I would say to them that you're in a very tough situation. Harrisburg is a lovely city. We have a lot going on here. You know, uh, my officers, the staff, especially Mayor Williams, um, the DA's office, the governor, you know, we all care for, for the citizens of Harrisburg. Um, I would say to them, like, you know, hold on because help is coming. Things will get better. Things will get better. You know, we do, we, we do not have a crystal ball. You know, we cannot tell when somebody is going to pull a trigger, when shots are going to go off. We don't know who's beefing with who. I wish I did have that much power because we would have zero crime, but we don't. So we're doing everything that we can possibly do and then more. There's some things that we can't talk about, but I guarantee you that, you know, things are being... Um, taken care of right now. One more question. Are police shortages maybe hindering investigations or anything of that matter? Yes, and as you know, Harrisburg has a police shortage like every other police agency nationwide. You know, we're um, doing things that we can do. We're testing to hire more officers, um, you know, um, and, and having, you know, um, police officers is fine, and that's good, more officers, because uh, uh, that helps us uh, to answer calls. And, but the biggest thing that I would say that helps is the cooperation of the citizens of this city, because if we all unite and come together and push these bad people out and start telling on people, and then that would cut down on a whole lot of violence because, you know, neighborhoods would, would stand up. They would have one strong voice and say that we're not going to tolerate it. We're not going to put up with it. So I encourage that to happen, and it's been going on. And I encourage, you know, people to go in their kids' rooms, toss their rooms, do any and everything, you know, that they can do, you know, to make sure, you know, that they don't have a family member that's caught up and carrying guns and shooting guns and, and joining gangs.